All right, I'm here with Chris. What's your last name, Chris? Kleinick. Kleinick from ABC Rental. We're going to be talking about gasoline and fuel and small equipment. Because what this guy knows, you don't know, and I didn't know. <laughs> the modern day fuels that we are pumping into our small equipment could possibly be damaging and destroying it. Now, Chris is the manager at ABC Rental, and all they handle is small equipment. Let's go over and check out some of the stuff they do. So you can see behind us the fleet of equipment. What we're going to be talking about is non-oxygenated gas, Chris? Correct. Non-oxygenated, no ethanol fuel. Okay. And so what do you run in your equipment? We run non-oxygenated 92 octane um, regular unleaded gas. Okay, so tell me about how the fuels have changed and what it's doing to small equipment today. With the small equipment with the ethanol blended fuel, the, the gasoline only lasts about 30 to 45 days in a can before it loses its freshness. Okay, so what happens when it loses freshness? What does that mean? It doesn't, it doesn't combust as well in the cylinder. Okay. So if someone has a can that they've left over the winter and they dump it into their trimmer or their chainsaw and it doesn't start right away, it doesn't have that combustible because the ethanol is breaking down. Okay, so, so but more important than that, isn't the ethanol in there destroying the seals it on is, the equipment? It, yes, it's, it, it breaks the rubber down and the rubber on the little needles and seats inside of and the diaphragms inside of the carburetor and makes them almost like mush. Same thing with the fuel lines. Um, if you see something that sits for a couple of years, you can grab the fuel line and it's just much. So that's like if you store your equipment, if you're going into the fall and you're putting it away for the season, yes. and you have just standard gasoline in your equipment, don't be surprised if it's not going to run right in the spring. Exactly, yes, because it, 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 it gums up. It gets almost gooey inside of the carburetor. Okay. So again, And I've, it, I've seen that. I've seen hoses where it's just like, why yes. is this hose like feel like it's just... Yeah. yeah, like it's broken down. Okay. Yeah, it's mush. And what it does is it plugs all the little portholes and all the little, um, I'm trying to think now, I've lost for words now. <laughs> plugs all the little passageways in the carburetor okay. so that the fuel can't get where it's going. Okay. Let's walk over and look at some of the equipment you handle. So, ABC Rental here in South St. Paul. Um, basically, their livelihood depends on all of this equipment that you see behind us starting and running consistently day after day, week after week, month after month. And they have a formula that they use to keep that happening. So what kind of fuel do you put in your equipment? We put 92-octane 92, 92 non-oxygenated fuel along with seafoam. Okay, so non-oxy non fuel. Make sure you remember these words because there's standard fuel 87 then, octane there's 87 then there's 80, 89 9, and then 92 92 which is the premium fuel but then there's also a non-oxygenated correct see that's which, the which difference is a 93 well 92 or 93 is most of the time the non okay but it is posted right on the pumps uh, most people shop price they don't look at the pump they look at the price tag okay and they should be looking below that so is that on the little tag where it says like 92 octane? Will it see, you see it there where it most, says... Most of the time right below it. You'll see it'll say up to 10% ethanol added to this fuel. Okay. And if it's not, it will also say that no ethanol added to that fuel. So let's go backwards. Okay. You said you added sea foam. Correct. Why would you add sea foam in the middle of summer? Sea foam takes moisture out of any fuel. It helps keep it fresh. Um, you don't know what you're pumping out of that out of that tank at the gas station. You could be getting the last six inches of that tank, mm -hmm. and there may be moisture. Okay. So that just helps reduce the moisture content in the fuel. Metal in a metal gas can, or if you have a metal tank on your small engine, creates condensation. So, so if your tank runs half empty, it's a hot summer day, it's you're going to get build moisture. You're going to get moisture even if it's not raining out. So it's, exactly. not, it's not about rainwater no, coming in. Not at all. It's not about all. condensation. Condensation. Oh, that's that's why metal, you know, metal rusts even if it's inside any moisture in the air, it the metal collects that moisture and it just emits it. Thanks. So keeping that fuel fresh is very important. So now here's an interesting story that Chris doesn't know. 
this whole video was spurred by a conversation I had with one of your mechanics a couple years ago. Okay. And I was dropping some equipment off, and he's like, you know, I've worked here for X amount of years, and, uh, you know, we were talking about winterization techniques, which I want to get into. Sure. And he said he was a, a fan of heat. I think it's H-E-E-T. Right. I think that's how you pronounce it. And everybody here was saying, no, you got to use seafoam, seafoam. So what he did was he made laid a bet, and he winterized half the equipment with heat, okay. and he winterized the other half of the equipment with seafoam. So he just filled it up with gasoline, non-oxygenated gas, put the heat in half, put the seafoam in the other half. And then in the springtime, he went to see which one started up and which one didn't. Sure. Consistently, time after time, all the equipment with the seafoam fired right up. All the yes. equipment with the heat, he was pulling carburetors apart and cleaning them. Yes. Right. Why is that? What is the difference? Well, the, the heat displaces moisture. When it's really cold out, it, it, it keeps keeps that, um, especially in the winter time, it keeps that fuel from freezing, is what it does. Okay. Sea foam blends itself in and takes away that moisture. Sea foam actually blends the water in with it and pretty much makes it go away. So is there a time to use heat versus sea foam? Well, I, I wouldn't recommend heat in a small engine at all because no. it's straight alcohol. Okay. Alcohol is not, which like ethanol is a form of alcohol is not good for any small engine because there's there isn't any lubricating qualities to, to alcohol so where would you use heat at in a vehicle in the vehicle okay. in the winter time if, you, if we're going to have a 20 degree below zero night and your car's outside and you're afraid it's going to freeze up that's where the heat comes in nice to put that in run your car for 15 minutes it'll keep that line from freezing so when is when is the right time to use ethanol and ethanol blended fuel because you see those options i mean besides starting campfires is there a good time to use ethanol well you can run it in your everybody runs it in their vehicle um, it does break down seals and fuel injectors um, any any rubberized part any fuel lines that have rubber in them over time they will break that rubber down okay so, so you're taking a risk when you put it in your vehicle and also don't you experience a loss of power you do, and you, and you also see um, lower fuel mileage. Okay. So, um, for instance, one of the kids that works here, his dad just came back from California on his motorcycle, on his Harley, and he was getting 240 miles to the tank on ethanol fuel in California, 300 miles to the tank in Colorado where he was buying regular non-oxygen fuel. Holy so 50 crap. miles more on a tank, on a six-gallon tank. That's incredible. It can, is. Can we go see your operation? Absolutely. Let's go check out what ABC Rental does here. They, um, I rent all my equipment from these guys. Awesome guys to work with. And it probably helps that I've known Chris for 25 years. For some years. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here's the shop. You can uh, you can see the man. You can hear the manly music Chris <laughs> listens to. Let's just tune in real quick. Talk radio. <laughs> It sounds like talk radio, Chris. That sounds like a little different. I'm surprised Chris isn't breaking out and doing a little dance for us right now. But check out all the equipment that they manage. This is no lightweight operation. This is the real deal here. This is how they make their living. They have a pretty hefty shop set up here. So they rent a lot of equipment. They rent, let's step outside so we're not getting the sounds confused. They rent a lot of equipment, but they also rent, you know, stuff to do parties and stuff. But this is, you guys really focus a lot on equipment, don't you? We do. Um, that and the repair of it, too. We, we do small engine repair, anything from lawnmowers, riding lawnmowers, snowblowers, trimmers, stone saws, pretty much anything that has a So gas what is the on. winterization technique that you typically use when you're going to set something aside? You know, this mower right here, right. you're not going to use it for eight months. What are you going to do for that thing? We're going to dump a couple capfuls of sea foam into the tank, run it for 15 or 20 minutes so that that sea foam gets into the carburetor mm -hmm. and it, it will be good. We do that with all of our equipment over the winter. Um, it all gets stored outside in, in our mini storage, which is cold. So it gets stored in cold storage? Cold storage. Um, one other thing that people can do with their small two-cycle equipment is run it dry. Um, and the reason being, over the course of the winter, in a small carburetor, the gasoline will evaporate, leaving just the oil in the carburetor. Oh, okay. okay. So you come to start it next spring, you put some fresh gas in, you hit the primer bulb, 
blowing it about 65 times. Finally starts and it's blowing blue smoke like mosquito control <laughs> yes. because you're trying to burn all that oil out of it. Okay. So running a small chainsaw trimmer or anything, two stroke, two cycle, meaning gas oil mix, it would be better to just run it dry. Just run it dry, run dump it dry. the fuel out, don't exactly. bother with it, try to get it as empty as possible. That's yep. your best winter. Yep. And you technique. can start it and run it until it won't until it quits. It'll burn out whatever's in that carburetor. So after you dump the gas out, try and start it, let it cycle until it won't run anymore, and now you know you're empty. Okay. Completely dry. What about oil and uh, something? Um, oil and ours, we, we typically change in the fall. Um, well, we change midway through the summer, but we change in the fall so that we're ready for the spring. We don't have to do it in the spring. Because if spring hits us, hits us quick, you know, we get an early spring and you need to get your lawn mowed. Do it. So, so you change it mid-season, yep. and then you do an end-of-season change, correct? and you don't bother changing it in the spring because you're good to go. Because we've already changed it What last about fall. condensation inside the engine itself? Do you get condensation in the fuel tanks? Do you get condensation in engines? Um, we don't see too much of that inside the engine with the oil because it's got a coating of oil on it. Do you use any special additives in the oil? We do, do like not. Like an AMS oil or we, anything like we that? We use a, a semi-synthetic. Uh, Why not pure synthetic? Um, well, number one is cost. Okay. It's extremely expensive when you're running you know, 50, 60 pieces of equipment and a quart of oil each, you know, in each one, and you're mm -hmm. paying four dollars more a quart. So you haven't, um, you haven't noticed the difference in it. We haven't. Okay. So, so power isn't really affected by going full synthetic. Can you go longer on an oil change, or don't you recommend that? Um, with a full synthetic, yes, you can go longer. Um, ours, with our stuff, we. Oil gets checked after every rental, so if we see it getting black or dirty, it just gets changed. So, okay. But with this stuff here, it, it seems it, with the maintenance that we do after every rental, cleaning the air filter um, and checking oil after every rent, we're able to keep up on that. Most people don't check their oil. Um, we have a lot of lawnmowers that come in that we're doing tune-ups on that hold three quarters of a quart of oil and we're taking less than a half a quart out. So they're not checking their oil at all, which is something you should do. Obviously, I mean, you check it in your car, you should check it in your own. For sure. All right. Well, let's take a shop tour. Let's, okay. let's get the interesting music maybe turned down a little bit. Yeah. And I, let's take a shop tour. Okay. All right. Let's check out the ABC Rentals Behind the Scenes Shop Tour. Everybody loves these. Let's check this place out. This is cool. This is our shop where we do all the repair, all of our snowplow installation. Um, we have a hoist for, for working on oh, the yeah. snowplows and installing the snowplows. I walked right underneath it and didn't even see it. There it is. So, so this is where, where all of the, uh, all the repair end happens. Um, and then next door we have a wash bay where all of the service when a machine comes back it's cleaned. So every time a machine comes back you clean it, power washed? It gets cleaned, power washed, oil checked, air filter cleaned, and ready for rent. So you have a full-time mechanic that just that's what he pretty much does, must be. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, I, I'm one of the full-times and then the, the guys that work in the wash bay um, are responsible for the air filters, the oil, checking the oil. Um, keeping the oil changed in them. If there's anything more than that, then it gets brought over to our side over here, and then we take care of it. Let's go check out the other side. All right, yeah. see Which way you want to go? I will follow you. It's your place. I don't, uh, I actually do know my way around here a little bit. <laughs> I send all my guys down here. Yeah. So this is the washway, full length washway, full floor drain. So this also, is where- No salt, equipment, no equipment. <laughs> All even your stuff that you rent out in the winter time, you probably yeah, I could take care of it here. Because you rent skid loaders out too. I see you have yeah, uh, we do skid loaders. Uh, I don't actually the skid loaders are gone right now, but there's yeah. I've seen them here. Um, trenchers, postal diggers. So I know this is a different topic. What do you think is the best line of equipment that you carry? Oh, geez, best line of equipment. You know, okay. Here's a here's a good interest. A good, my my observation is you have Terex right there. Yes. Okay. We have we have switched to Terex. Uh, that was an owner's decision to switch. Uh, we used to run all Bobcat. Okay. Here's my feedback. 
because these guys switched to Terex. I'm like, well, maybe, you know, they know something I don't know. So I bought a Terex. It lasted about three weeks before I sold that son of a duck. Yes. <laughs> You'll get no argument from me. <laughs> I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> so, yes. yeah, that was gone. Yes. Um, we, we have had some issues with our Terex skid loaders. Okay. The little mini excavator has been great. Has it? Yes. And we have a small PT-30 Terex that has been great. Um, our other two rubber tire and larger track machine, we've had some issues. Okay. Um, but we've got them worked out and everything. So that's one you don't like. Which one do you like? I like Bobcat. I love Bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I've switched, I've switched everything over yes. to Bobcat. Yes. So I mean, they all, have their, they all have their... They all have their problems yeah but you know and again with with the larger equipment one of the reasons we went to Terex Bobcat with their new tier 4 engines you now have to put diesel exhaust fluid in it Ugh. the Terex the ones that we bought weren't to the tier 4 yet so we didn't have to incorporate DEF with our maintenance program and when a customer rents a machine for two weeks at a time worrying about if he's going to keep the def filled. So that was one of the other reasons why we went to Terex because we didn't have to. So what do you know about yet. diesel exhaust? Fluid? I don't know a whole lot about okay, it. Okay, good, because no. I know nothing. <laughs> I know absolutely nothing. Yeah, I just know that we don't have to put it in any of our equipment. From it. So for small equipment, what is your favorite brand? Um, well, anything that's got a Honda engine on it. <laughs> Honda has been, we've had, we have some equipment here that has been here for 14, 15 years, and still running the same engine. I have a Honda four-wheeler <laughs> that's 28 years old. Yeah. Just go out and hit a little, hit, yeah. hit a little button, it goes boom, boom, yeah. boom, still have, to this day. Yeah, I have an 1986 Honda. I've got an 87, yep, yeah, the TRX 200. <laughs> it's like <laughs> amazing. Yes, it is. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, we really like the Honda Pulse stuff. Some of our larger equipment ends up with a Kohler on it, which Polar's a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent engine too. Yep. But, um, but yeah, anything Honda powered is you, you can't go wrong. So let's recap. When you're winterizing, you're putting non-oxy, non-oxy, a premium non-oxy in sea foam, storing it right outside. Yep. Running it for 15 or 20 minutes to get that sea foam into the carburetor. Okay. And storing. then and then you're taking your small equipment, you're running it completely dry. Emptying the fuel, running dry. Okay. Perfect. You're running sea foam through it in the middle of the summer as well, just because condensation can occur, not because it's raining out, just right. because they, the, the changes in the heat and the cold. Correct. There you go. Now you probably know a lot more about gasoline, storing equipment, and when your equipment runs good in the next uh, next time you start it up next summer, this is the guy you got to thank. Or if you didn't listen to this video, you can come see us and we'll take your money. <laughs> <laughs> They'll repair it for you. All right. Have a good one, my friends.